Welcome to the Alpha Training and Consulting's online training program. Today I'm going to answer the question, what is the bathtub curve? Keep us in mind for all of your ASQ preparation training needs. We'd love to have you as a student. And with that being said, let's get back to the topic at hand. Failure rate, or lambda, we call it lambda because we symbolize failure rate with the letter from the Greek alphabet. It's called lambda. And what is failure rate? The reason I'm telling you about failure rate, because that's the vertical axis on the bathtub curve. And the x-axis, or horizontal axis, is time. So let's uh, first study a little bit about lambda, or failure rate. The total number of failures within an item population divided by the total number of life units expended by that population during a particular measurement interval, or test, under stated conditions. So failure rate equals the number of items that failed, usually during a reliability test, divided by the total test time. So that's pretty basic stuff there. And that is the y-axis. And as I said earlier, this uh, x-axis is the time axis. Now this is the bathtub curve. And you can see why they call it the bathtub curve. It looks like the cross-section of a bathtub. And they break it into three areas of study. One is the burn-in period, also known as the early, early failure rate period. Another name is decreasing failure rate over time, is how you can refer to that. And we model this section of the curve. These uh, burn-in period, early failure rate, infant mortality period. There's all kinds of names for these, as you may imagine. Anyway, we use the Weibull distribution to model this part of uh, the distribution. By the way, the Weibull can model the whole bathtub curve, uh, but it's not the most user-friendly curve, so we usually divide it into three areas. This next area is called the normal operating period, or the constant failure period, and here uh, we use the exponential distribution to model this section right here. And we'll do an example problem of the exponential. We're not going to do an example problem of the Weibull or normal, but we will hit an example problem on exponential since it's the, the most common one that we focus on, to be honest with you, in most cases. All right, then we come into this far right area here. It's component degradation and fatigue area, also called the wear-out period, or period of wear-out failures. And uh, we, as mentioned earlier, we use the normal distribution to model this. And so there you have it. That's the bathtub curve. And uh, we use it all the time in reliability engineering. It uh, follow uh, many things fo follow this curve, many uh, products, but not always completely because sometimes you'll study something and they have preventative maintenance, so they put it out of service here and replace it. So this portion will be gone. And then if you have a great incoming inspection program that can get rid of this portion, then it will look like this. And if you have a great incoming inspection system and you replace it before it wears out, then you'll just have a straight line. But in theory, this is a good model to study, no doubt. All right, I'm just going to cover each section briefly. And this is the decreasing hazard rate over time. In other words, the burn-in period. This portion of the curve is often referred to as the infant mortality portion and is defined by its decreasing failure rate or hazard rate over time. Okay, now we go to the middle section here. This portion of the curve is identified by its constant failure rate. This portion of the curve becomes a reality after the poor quality parts have been screened out. This portion of the curve is often referred to as the random failure rate period uh, or constant failure rate period. These failures are often the result of special causes. Uh, and so, for example, an airplane flying through the air, its probability of getting hit by a bird is equal during this whole time, okay? Uh, because the bird doesn't say, hey, there's an old engine, let's go get it, right? And it attacks the airplane, that's not the way it works. It doesn't care if it's an old engine, a newer engine, uh, the, the probability of failure is constant across here. Okay, and like I said, we use the exponential distribution. I am going to do an example problem in this lecture on that. Okay, here's increasing failure rate over time, also called the wear-out period. This portion of the curve is referred to as the wear period of wear-out. This portion is defined by its increasing failure rate or hazard rate over time. 
This portion of the curve is the result of the inherent nature of the part. To make improvement on this por portion of the curve, one must change the design. So you can change the design and shift this curve out further. Okay? But that's where it takes place is in design, this failure rate. All right, let's work an example problem like I've been promising you. The formula for reliability of constant failure rate is shown here. Remember I said it was the exponential distribution, and it's uh, base log e to the negative. Don't forget the negative sign. Students always do that. Negative lambda, or failure rate times time, or that also equals minus uh, time divided by mean time between failure. Because I didn't say this earlier, but if you take the failure rate and invert it, it equals mean time between failure. So there you go. All right, a device experiences a constant uh, failure rate with a mean time between failure of 600 hours. What is the reliability at 650 hours? So I go back here since they gave me mean time between failure. I'll use this formula right here. And I'm interested in the reliability at 650 hours. Uh, but the mean time between failure is 600. And uh, the time then is 650 because that's what I'm interested, what reliability is equal to. And so I plug that in my calculator and I get 0.3385 or 33.85%. So the device has a 33.85% chance of meeting the operational needs at 650 hours of service. And thus, it's the reliability. All right, again, keep us in mind uh, for all these ASQ preparation classes. I have a website for each one, so put this on pause, pick the one you'd like, copy that down, maybe do a screenshot. If you have any questions, please contact me. I'd love to talk with you. And uh, have a great day and hope to talk to you soon. Goodbye.